I don't get it though. If we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Oh, hello there. Welcome back to Bearded Brushstrokes Blackstone Fortress character focus series. Uh, we're looking at Dayak Grek, who is the Kroot Ranger model uh, character for Blackstone Fortress today. So I thought I'd better brush up on my knowledge of evolution and genetics. And while I try and puzzle that out, you sit tight, put the model together, be right back. So here he is, Dayak Grek, who is the, uh, as I say, is the Kroot Tracker. So I'll turn him around and show you the back there. And you will get more detailed uh, images of all of these characters as I settle into painting them. And we'll get those on video as well. Anyway, so let's have a look at the character. Bring up on the screen here, you can see that Dayak Grek's movement is three squares, which are three tiles, uh, which makes him exceptionally fast for uh, for a game of Blackstone Fortress. He has a defense of d6, which means he's got a, uh, a one in six chance of getting a, uh, a success and a one in six chance of getting a critical success. Uh, he has an agility and a vitality roll of uh, d8, which gives him a 50-50 chance of getting a good roll on either of those. Moving on then, looking at the weapons, which you'll see here. First of all is the Kroot Rifle. Now, close up, you'll notice that it's actually not that bad in combat, and the reason for that is that the Kroot have uh, two thumbs on each hand, and therefore can use their weapons, which have got spikes and blades on them, as close combat weapons, as well as um, shooting weapons. And they're not magnificent weapons at long range. I mean, we're not looking at an Eldar sniper rifle here. So it really excels when it comes to that shorter range. So two to three uh, hexes, it's, uh, it's hitting on a D12. Now the D12, of course, hits on two, hits two thirds of the time. Um, and one third of the time is going to be ignoring cover with those criticals, so that's quite nice. And after four tiles, peters out a bit. But you're not really, I can't see why you would, ever really going to be using the uh, the Kroot Rifle at close range. Only really, I suppose, if you can't get the four plus uh, on the dice roll. I'm looking at you, Tom. That's 20 Sided Life over on Instagram. Uh, if you can't get the 4 plus action that you need to roll using your combat weapons because he's much better in combat with his pistol and rifle blade. So there you go. So how about Grek's special or unique actions? Well first of all he can drop booby traps as any good tracker really should even including Dutch from Predator. And here is one of the booby trap markers. Okay, now he drops those on a six plus, as we see here. Uh, as you can, as you read there, it says place a booby trap marker in a hex that is adjacent and visible to Dayak Grek, and does not contain any explorers, hostiles, or another booby trap marker. If an explorer or hostile enters a hex with a booby trap marker, then their activation ends. They suffer one grievous wound and are stunned. The booby trap marker is then removed. A maximum of three of these can be placed in each combat. Flip the marker to the used side when it has been removed. Let's have a look. And I've got to be honest, Games Workshop, I'm looking at this and the symbol is the same on both sides. That has to be said that in the, um, in the creator's commentary, uh, it is noted that the way that the the markers come out of the uh, of the cardboard that surrounds it, it 
has a rounded side and a flat side, it's suggested that you delineate the rounded side as the in use and the flat side as the used side there. So that has been taken care of, but it's not immediately obvious from the rules. Moving on to Dayak's special rules. Okay, and we're only looking at his non-inspired persona at the moment. Okay, as we move a little further down the card then we see Absorb Traits. Now, unlike the other um, adventurers in Blackstone Fortress, Dayak the Grek does not have a secret agenda. Instead, whenever you make an inspiration roll for Dayak Grek, double the wounds value of all hostiles that he slew during that activation. Now, unlike previous Warhammer Quest products, certainly from this generation anyway, you do not gain renown or XP or whatever you want to call it for killing enemy bad guys. Um, what you get instead is for that turn, you stack up how many wounds you cause. Mrs. Brushstrokes and I like to put the uh, the models that we've killed onto the onto the character card to remind us. It doesn't always work. You stack up, say you killed two rebel guardsmen and a spindle drone. Well, each of those things has two wounds. What you would then do is take the blackstone dice, which is the d20, roll that, and attempt to get equal to or less than the number of wounds caused. So in this case, six or less. That gives you an inspiration point. And that inspiration point can be used for a variety of reasons. The main one is to burn three of them, so get rid of all three of them, and flip the card over to its inspired side so you get those better stats. We'll cover off inspiration points at a later date when I do a how-to uh, video on how to play the game. Okay, but rest assured, that's their main use. You sort of stock them up. Well, in that case, Greg would not have to roll six or less. He would have to roll 12 or less, which you can imagine well, that's twice the ability to uh, to become uh, inspired and from uh, from experience it's quite difficult to become inspired through that means so that's brilliant uh, looking a bit further down his defense value becomes a um, goes from being a d6 because he's not really wearing much in the way of armor he's got a, a cloak I don't know where especially relevant since they're, they're evolved from birds I don't know where Kroot keep their giblets, um, but certainly not on show is the answer here. Uh, he's kind of got a belt on, but really only to carry his kit. So, as I say, Greg doesn't really have much in the way of armour, but if he's behind a piece of cover, then that goes from a D6 with a one-third chance of, uh, of being effective, all the way up to a D12 with a two-thirds chance of being effective. But he has to be in cover. Again, we'll, come, we'll, we'll talk about cover and things like that when I do a how-to, uh, so we can show you how to play. And finally, Tracker. After the battlefield has been set up, but before the first turn of combat begins, Grek can make a move action and can then take a booby track out of trap action. So just before the uh, the game actually kicks off when you've uh, gotten off the maglev and moved into a combat encounter um, then Dayak Grek can move three uh, three hexes and immediately place a booby trap now that's absolutely phenomenal because it's done outside of the standard initiative order um, where normally any number of, uh, of, of people can go first um, so Grek gets to do that before anything else happens, and that is very, very useful, especially considering what we've learned about the booby traps uh, shutting down a, uh, an activation. So if you put them in the right place, immediately before the, uh, the combat starts, any bad guys coming towards you get stuck in the, uh, in the booby trap, which is good news. Anyway, what happens when you do get to a point where Diet Greg is inspired. Let's flip over the card and find out. Okay, so Diet Greg, again, if we zoom in a bit here, nothing actually changes in terms of his defense, agility, and vitality. They're all 
as they were before, a d6 for defense and agility and vitality are both d8s. Okay, so what changes? Moving a bit further down then, we have the weapon actions. So let's zoom in there. Recruit rifle, still a one plus action. This time, close up is using a uh, is using a d12. So the difference there is that previously it was using a d8, which means it goes from a 50-50 chance of hitting to a two thirds. That's 66 versus 44 chance of uh, of hitting. Markedly better. Also, then at that greater range, uh, sorry, slightly greater range, that middling range of two to three hexes. Uh, it goes up to rolling 2d8. Remember, when you see two symbols to roll a dice, what you actually do is roll both of those dice and pick the highest. So, much, much better chance there when rolling 2d8 with a 50-50 chance on each of those to get, the, uh, to get the relevant roll that you need. And it's important to remember that when you're rolling two dice it's not roll one dice and then re-roll it it's roll the two dice and that will become important when you start getting re-rolls on those actions and things like that because that would be a case of a 50 50 chance on each of those dice with a re-roll on each of those dice okay and then again a greater range when he's inspired grek becomes a much better shot with a two-thirds chance of hitting at a range of four plus and that's to say, still a one plus action. Moving down though, the Kroot rifle, uh, sorry, the pistol and Kroot blade have become, first of all, a two plus action, which means they're much, much easier to pull off and will be more likely to be used really in close combat. And also become, as we see here, a 2d8 action, similar to the, uh, the middling range with the Kroot rifle. Okay, so much, much better there. The booby trap is still a six plus action and the wording is exactly the same. So you pop one of those down on a six plus and when a hostile or a, uh, or a friendly walks into that space, their action immediately stops and they suffer a grievous wound. Now, a grievous wound, um, as I don't think I mentioned previously, a grievous wound is three points of damage, which can kill a lot of the uh, the smaller bad guys outright, and they become stunned. Okay, so I'm not sure what stunned means, if I'm honest with you. I will check, and we'll cover it when it comes time to do the how-to. In previous versions of the game, it means that for the following round, in this case for the following sort of uh, initiative round, that uh, character wouldn't be able to do anything. I suspect it's similar in this. Special rules, absorb traits. Okay, so again, he doubles the um, the value of any wounds that he's caused in order to become inspired or to generate inspiration points. And you might wonder why does he need to be able to do that when he's already inspired? Well certain adventurers have items that they need to find like the etheric chronometer on Janus Drake. Once they've found that they are effectively permanently inspired because unless they trade it away, lose it or it's destroyed, they always have it at the start of a, uh, of a combat or any other adventure. With characters like Dayuk Grek, he doesn't have an item and he doesn't have a secret agenda so he has to become inspired through those inspiration points so it's worthwhile him having the same ability on both sides of his card so that he can store up the inspiration points and at a later point when you start a new adventure burn them immediately and become inspired because he's much better in his inspired state okay moving a bit further down then we also have field craft so once again his defense value goes from the rather poultry bit of a crude joke there they've, they've evolved from birds anyway moving on um from a rather poultry d6 with a one third chance of uh, of a, a positive outcome to that lovely d12 with a two thirds chance of a positive outcome 
and a one third chance of uh, avoiding a grievous injury from a lucky critical hit. Okay, and then once again at the bottom here, as you can see, we have tracker. And once again, the wording is exactly the same. So he can take a move action and then take a booby track action, trap action. It does not have to be um, does not have to be activated. He doesn't have to be activated, and an activation dice does not have to be spent. So it's complete two completely free actions. And again, I cannot emphasize how good that is, because even if you're just using it to get ahead of the game. Uh, into the uh, into the the vault that you're uh, that you're looking over, or into the combat area, and getting into a better position for the following turn, that is almost invaluable. Anyway, those are Diok Rex uh, statistics for Blackstone Fortress. Let's have a closer look at how things are in Warhammer 40k. So we've got the uh, trusty data sheet book here and we'll turn to page 10 where and again we'll zoom in here we go I'll show you first thing we notice Dioch Grek is an elite choice he is two power points uh, so you can include him for two power in an open play game uh, looking at his stats as we saw in Blackstone Fortress, he's got a movement of three, which makes him a cut above the, uh, the human characters. And in this case, he's got a movement of seven inches, which is faster than the standard human. He hits in close combat and at, at range on a three plus, which is magnificent. Uh, once again, demonstrating the, uh, the efficacy of the crew in both close combat and shooting. Although he is still a weedy strength 3 and toughness 3. He has got 3 wounds and 3 attacks. His leadership 7 and once again his defence, his save is a bit rubbish uh, on a 6 plus. Okay, so let's have a look at his Kroot pistol. That's got a range of 12 inch, it's pistol and strength 4 with damage 1. Uh, which means obviously he gets to shoot it in close combat. Um, Kroot Rifle has two statistic blocks, which is quite interesting. We've got this one here, and this one here, shooting and melee. Well, shooting, it's got a range of 24 inches, it's rapid fire one, and a strength of four, defense of one, uh, damage of one, sorry. This Kroot Rifle is melee, gives him plus one strength, they're quite sturdy things, the crew rifles, so I can see that having a bit more weight behind it. Still only does damage one and no AP, but still hitting on threes and uh, say against the Space Marine, wounding on fours is better than hitting on threes and wounding on fives, demonstrably. Uh, moving on, how does Tracker work? Because this is one of his uh, his abilities that he's brought over from uh, from Blackstone Fortress. Tracker. During deployment, you can set up Dayak Grek in pursuit rather than placing him on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, he can reveal his hiding place and attack. Set him up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. And again, in terms of jumping ahead of the uh, of the opponent and being where they don't expect you to be, that's fantastic. I want to move on then to Quarry Can't Hide. He can target an enemy character, even if they're not the closest unit. So that's effectively the sniper rule, uh, allowing him to pick out whichever, well, an enemy character specifically, um, even if uh, a unit is closer than, uh, than the character. So normally characters can hide behind or around other units. So that's quite useful. And again, puts him in that middle ground between where you would expect um, an imperial, a human character to be in terms of uh, sort of a shooting melee kind of mercenary character and sort of the Asiani uh, rangers that we see in the Eldar army or the Eldari armies. Moving on then, concealed booby trap. Now I'm quite happy that he can do this. 
Once per battle, at the end of your opponent's movement phase, you can choose an enemy unit on the battlefield and roll a d6. Subtract one from the result if the unit is a character, but add one if the unit contains ten or more models. On a four or more, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds, and on a seven plus, it suffers d6 mortal wounds instead. And that's much better than previous systems where you've had to, say, make a note or... Uh, do a bit of a doodle or something uh, because it's a dice roll and there's, you don't need to remember or anything like that except there's one use only. And once again, moving on, then we have Fieldcraft, another ability that uh, Grek brings over from Blackstone Fortress. If he's receiving the benefit of cover, ordinarily you would add one to his armor save, which makes it a five plus. Uh, he gets a plus two because he's exceptionally good at hiding. That makes it a four plus. So he's got a 50-50 chance rather than a one-third chance. Okay, and that sounds very, very familiar indeed. Although at, uh, in, in Blackstone Fortress, that 50-50 chance is a, uh, is a two-thirds chance. But anyway, so that is all of his special rules and abilities. Moving on to faction keywords then, unsurprisingly he's a member of the Tau Empire and the Krupp sub-faction and he has the keywords character, infantry, Krupp tracker, Dayak Grek, all of which you'd expect to find there. And just to have a, a peeky look at the uh, points costs. Let's have a look. We've got Dayak Grek is 20 points. Uh, as I've said previously, I'm not sure if that will change in chapter approved. I don't see how Dayak Grek is any more uh, of a threat than any other model in the Tau army uh, for a similar points cost. So I don't think we'll see that move up and down. But I don't know. I don't understand the current meta of 8th edition 40k. I intend on uh, on doing some uh, hands-on research at some point and figuring that out. But for now, that's everything in terms of Dayak Grek. Just a bit of a roundup then. If you have a look in the description below the video, you should see a Twitter feed and a Facebook group. Please feel free to follow and join those. Um, please give the video a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell as well, because for some reason subscription isn't enough for uh, for YouTube. Uh, you may have noticed that I've got a, uh, a fantastic new uh, logo that is available on a t-shirt from Teespring at the moment. Those t-shirts are fairly limited edition. They're available for the next 17 days, uh, so 16 at uh, a day of posting and they are £20 plus postage and packaging. If you haven't got a, uh, a Christmas present sorted out for that loved one, or you're looking for a stocking filler, I can't suggest anything better at the moment because, well, I'm biased. In the meantime, keep an eye out on Instagram. There's also a link to my Patreon. And um, yeah, look after yourselves, be kind to yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time.